Hello everybody, it's Matt from RoyalCaribbeanBlog.com. Thanks for joining us here on YouTube. Be sure to check out RoyalCaribbeanBlog.com for everything Royal Caribbean related. And today, we're talking about the truth about seasickness. We're recording this video live on a Monday. We actually do that every Monday here on YouTube. So come join us here each and every time we are live. And uh, yeah, we're, we're spilling the beans on seasickness. Because I gotta tell you guys, I know a lot of first time cruisers, boy, if they're concerned about something, it is about getting seasick on their cruise. It's it's okay. It's understandable. I'm not I'm not passing judgment, but I'm also here to give you the lowdown on what you really need to know about about getting seasick on a cruise. So let's talk about the basics. What is seasickness? Right. Most of the sickness occurs when what you see conflicts with what your inner ear senses. In other words, if you're sitting in a car not moving. But your inner ear detects movement, like the car just hit 70 miles an hour on a highway, the two signals being sent to your brain don't match up. And these mixed signals can confuse your brain, and the sensations and symptoms, like dizziness and nausea, are the result. All right, so now that Mr. Science here has explained it all to you, now let's talk about uh, the truth about season things as it relates to a cruise ship. And I think it's really important to understand the, the, the matter of which cruise ships are built. Ships are designed not to have a lot of movement. They have innovative design and engineering, and cruise ships can safely navigate around inclement weather and also take advantage of stabilizer fins that are built off the ship's port and um, starboard sides that are on the waterline to help reduce side-to-side -side motion. So really, most guests never experience any motion sickness. Again, cruise ships are massive vessels, so unlike maybe a fishing boat you've been on, it takes a lot more to move those bad boys around. And in addition to that, they're also going to go around bad weather. They're not going to just keep sailing into the path, regardless if it's a storm there or not. Uh, we just saw this with hurricane season. If there's a storm, if there's bad weather, if it's not conducive to the safety of the ship, the crew, or the or the guests on board, they're going somewhere else. Now, um, all Royal Caribbean ships do have motion sickness medications. And um, the most popular one is Meclizine, which is readily available at the dedicated medical center that are available on each and every one of Royal Caribbean ships. And the best part, by the way, it's free. If you're feeling a little nauseous, if it's starting to get to you for some reason, you can always get to the medical center, get a free dose of meclizine, no additional charge. Now, if you're if there's more troublesome sea sickness, Royal Caribbean's medical centers also carry promethazine and meto metoclopramide. I, I think those are medicines. They sound like medicines. But sometimes the best treatment is actually prevention. You know, it's best that guests know if they are prone to seasickness that they consult their doctor prior to departure. If your doctor feels that it's appropriate, he or she can actually prescribe a patch that you wear uh, right behind your ear that can prevent seasickness from happening altogether. And uh, the most common one is a transderm scop. It's important to be applied before the sailing to be truly effective, right? Um, there's also a lot of natural remedies. I know we've been talking a lot about drugs here and, and things of that nature, but really there are a lot of great natural remedies that a lot of people swear by alleviate motion sickness. I mean, anecdotally, ginger seems to be the most helpful, and some people find various aromas like anise or basil or uh, peppermint or even eating dry crackers, even after you start feeling a little sick, uh, they can really help a lot. And if a few sips of ginger ale or chewing fresh ginger doesn't do the trick, you can also go for a short walk to the center of the ship, which is also the most balanced area and therefore at least likely to produce sea sickness um, symptoms. But the bottom line is a lot of first time cruisers get really concerned about it because they think it's going to be, it's, it's, a, it, it's asking for it, right, kind of a situation. But the reality is it's very infrequent. And people in our chat would tell you if they've been on a couple cruises, it's really not what it's made out to be. So... Uh, make sure you, you look at that. And also, um, C. Alex in our chat points out that the patch, which I mentioned earlier, that prescription patch behind your ear, can have some side effects. Uh, the most noticeable side effects of a lot of these drugs are dry mouth or cotton mouth. Uh, but yeah, you always got to be aware of that. So, um, John Beast's acupuncture on the ship can help as well. Expensive, but effective. And the bottom line is figuring out a way for you to cruise. But I would, be, I would tell you, at, at the very least, you don't want to go into this saying, oh, I'm not going to go on a cruise because of I'm afraid I'm going to get seasick. It's it's it should not be a very high ranking concern for you because quite frankly, I'm here to tell you and a lot of others in the chat will say the same thing is that it's not as prevalent as you might think. So there you go, the truth about seasickness right here on today's YouTube live. And now we're gonna actually go to our chat to answer your cruise questions, guys. And we're gonna get a lot of questions today, but I want to start off with the most important question: 
how many days until your next Royal Caribbean cruise? Type it in chat. Would love to hear about it. Andy, P Andy is here. Uh, I've done Chops Grill for dinner on every cruise ship. I've done it and love it. Can you please tell me the differences between the dinner and lunch besides the price? The At Chops, Andy, the lunch menu is a much more pared down version of the dinner menu. So you have a much more limited selection of options for lunch. And in addition, lunch is also usually a little bit cheaper. So keep that in mind. Um, Kathy says wristbands to prevent seasickness work too. There's a lot of great homeopathic and non-drug related options for it. Again, it's got to find what works for you. And that's a really good suggestion. Thank you for sharing that there. Um, Jason Peters says don't get the non-drowsy Dramamine. It's not as good as the regular. Yeah, and a lot of, my favorite over-the-counter seasickness medication is um, Bonine. I've, I've used that in the past. It works for me. It does make you drowsy. But, I mean, hey, a nap on a cruise, sign me up for that. I'm always down for something like that. It's not, it's not like you're falling asleep the whole time. You're just probably going to have to take an afternoon nap for that. A lot of people got cruises coming up. I am at 11 days is all my next cruise. I actually just got off Mariner of the Seas today. And going back on Mariner of the Seas in 11 more days. So, it, so good, I need to go back again. So, it, it's a good feeling when you get off a cruise ship and you're kind of like depressed because it's the end of the cruise, obviously. But then you're like, wait a minute. Going on a cruise very soon thereafter. Uh, Nancy is new here. Very first cruise schedule on Liberty this season, March 2020. Been watching your videos. Thanks so much for all the valuable info. I'm so glad to hear that. And Liberty is a fantastic ship. Make sure you make some time to go see Saturday Night Fever on that ship. It's complimentary, no additional cost, and it is the Broadway show. Um, we have a question here from Jeff Robbins. Should I get the Thrill Water Park tickets at Coco Key? If you want to do the water park, it's absolutely worth it. I was just at the water park yesterday uh, at Perfect Day at Coco Key. Had a great time there. And honestly, the lines were not bad at all. It was really very manageable there. Uh, Yesenia likes ginger ale and finding a nice comfy seat towards the middle of the ship. Uh, Buko fan is in the house. Great job as always. Thank you. I'm driving to my next cruise in November on Anthem of the Seas. Would you recommend driving to the port or find a shuttle from the hotel? Definitely drive to the port. Uh, I am not a fan of the hotel parking or offsite parking options. The reason being, you save a little bit of money, but you're giving up a lot of flexibility. You have to rely on the shuttle schedule, which oftentimes is very infrequent. And then you also, not only that, you're also competing with other people for space on that shuttle. So I, I, I don't love it. I think park yourself at the, at the port. Um, Justin Hambly, just finally made it to the first live show. Thanks for everything you do. I'm 13 days from Liberty this season. Nice. John wants to, wants to know, any advice for something to do in Grand Cayman? Yes, check out uh, Seven Mile Beach. Great spot in there. Uh, Gaming Text, if I buy discounted Royal Caribbean gift cards for places like AARP or Allstate, can I use them to pay them incremental for my cruise? I don't recommend any gift cards at all for Royal Caribbean. Um, in my experience, they have very weird and difficult to, to apply rules. It's not like a gift card you get at the gap where you're just like, oh, here you go. It doesn't work that way. I don't recommend them at all. So my advice is don't get them. Uh, Jason Moore, my sister is booked on Harmony 27 Days with her soon-to-be ex-boyfriend. How hard is it to switch it for someone else? Very easy, Jason. Um, to swap names. So just to change one name for another, as long as one name on the reservation remains the same. My cat agrees with me. All you have to do is uh, you can do it as long as you have a couple. Don't do it at the last minute. I would do it now, but you can change names very easily. No change in price. When you try to add names or remove names, you can run into a price change there. But to make a name change at 23 days out, no problem at all. You can do it right now. And I would say, make sure you do it at least 72 hours, if not more, ahead of time. Uh, Hordell, what should we do in St. Thomas? I would tell you to go to Megan's Bay. Megan's Bay is by far the best thing there. Nancy, a little confused about extra tipping the person who takes care of your cabin. Do you do that in advance or at the end of your cruise? Do you have a video on tipping? I don't really have a video on it, Nancy, but when it comes to gratuities, understand that when it comes to your stateroom attendant and your dining room staff, that is covered for you. You either can prepay it like now, you can call your travel agent and tell them to prepay your gratuities, or every day of your cruise, there'll be an automatic gratuity that'll be applied for you. You don't have to do anything special for it, Nancy. Super easy, so there's nothing extra to do there. Um, so as it pertains to what you're asking me, you can actually sit on your hands right now and not have to do a thing because that automatic gratuity will take care of it. Gaming Tech's best advice for a back-to-back -back sailing. If you can, get the same room for both sailings. Jeff, your son doesn't want to go on a cruise? What? Can you give me some tips to convince him? Uh, after you shake him violently, like, what are you talking about? No, just kidding. Uh, you know, I would say uh, my advice is whatever ship you're looking at, show him some videos here on YouTube 
of what the onboard experience is like. I think a lot of people who are resistant to going on a cruise have a preconceived notion of what cruising is all about. It's usually not based in reality. Usually it's based on TV, movies, or just random thoughts. Um, and I think when they actually see it in person, there's a lot of folks who change their tune. I, as I mentioned, I was just on Mariner of the Seas. This was a, uh, a cruise in which Royal Caribbean invited me and other members of the media to come cover some of the things they're doing there for the Bohemian recovery efforts, right? And so I was cruising with a lot of people who actually had never been on a cruise ship before, or not for like eons, right? And one, I was talking to one of them and he told me, he was like, you know, I couldn't believe we're having a great time. And I, he said he couldn't believe how much there is to do there. It's not what he thought. Because I think a lot of people think a cruise ship is a floating hotel with a pool in there, right? It's not that. Um, JC, anyone know if you can choose to park in the overflow parking lot at Port Liberty? I don't know. What JC is talking about at Cape Liberty, there's a parking garage, but then there's an, the older outside thing right there. Uh, you can park out there's a, gra a gravel lot. I'm not sure if you can elect to do that. Whoa! 12th man proud! Holy moly, dude! With the big super chat. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, right, so thank you for creating the blog and this channel to in my planning of our first Royal Caribbean cruise so much easier and we learned so much. Well, my friend, I am so glad this is helping you out here. I'm so glad to have you part of this community and your generosity, not overlooked. Really appreciate that. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, Nia, are the cabanas worth it at perfect day? I am a cabana... Uh, by the way, chat, can we say a big thank you to 12th Man? Because that's awesome, the Super Chat. I mean, Super Chat's in general are really great. When you reach that level, yeah. Um, I think the, I love cabanas. I am a cabana junkie. Most times I get a cabana when I go to Coco Key. I would tell you that they can be worth it. What's, what I love about the cabanas are you have a, a dedicated spot, like a home base uh, that you can enjoy during your during the, your visit to Perfect Day. And... Um, it's just having it's nice having a little like private spot like that and it's not so little there's a lot of nice little benefits to it i like it a lot um it depends on the price i will tell you that i wouldn't pay any price for them and it seems like some of the prices have come down a little bit jc says the message boards at royal Crane blog are a great place to learn a lot absolutely love the message board communities and i love these live chats we do here on mondays because it gives us all an opportunity to learn from each other jeff what is my job i'm a web developer believe it or not uh charles how was the cruise on marin it was fan Fantastic. I did a three night sailing. As I mentioned before, I was a guest of Royal Caribbean that invited me to go on this sailing. And it was a super last minute sailing. But uh, we were there to cover the um, the relief efforts that Royal Caribbean was doing for the Bahamas. And I, it was such a moving couple days for me to see the crew taking time out of their own schedules to create 10,000 meals. And then a matter of hours later, deliver them to the people of the Bahamas. I, I was blown away by it. It was such a unique and different experience katie when can we start booking on board events or shows good question uh katie so uh, the answer is it depends um the, the royal Caribbean needs to be a little more consistent with when you can start booking on board entertainment things of that nature but these days not so much uh how do you save on back-to-back -back cruises you really don't in the sense that there is like a back-to-back -back discount it's a good question but there's not like um a means of which really you should look at each sailing, each leg of the back-to-back -back as individual cruises. Um, I think Jeff said, can we get Gabriella here? And she's getting ready for bed now. But we had a great video there on Friday. I hope you guys saw it. Where my daughter joined me on the video to talk about her favorite things on Royal Caribbean. Uh, Susie says, I finally can finally check in for your December cruise on Friday. Awesome. Uh, Paul Summerville is my, ship the biggest, my shirt the biggest in the world. Right, because I'm wearing my Oasis class t-shirts. That's... Uh, <laughs> Captain Sable Main Dining Room wants to know. Uh, it's embarkation day and checking in. The nice lady says, have you been sick recently? And you answer, yes. What happens next? Excellent question. A lot of people get scared of that, actually. So you go to embarkation day and they're going to ask you, sir or madam, have in the last seven days, have you had flu-like symptoms in the last 24, 48 hours? You know, have you experienced these kind of symptoms? And, you know, you're worried. What happens if you say yes to one of these? The answer is they're not going to be like, all right, that's it. You're off the ship. What they might do is they might say, okay, we're going to have you talk to our onboard, our physician, no additional costs, and they're just going to ask you some follow-up questions because they just want to make sure you're not like, you know, coming on board the ship and like, you know, falling over uh, sick. They obviously don't want you to infect other people, but obviously if you're past it 
if this is something that was in the in 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 that occurred days ago and you're just kind of you know obviously now just getting over it but it's still part of what happened recently that's okay too so it's not to say that if you answer yes you're definitely getting kicked off the ship or denied entry rather um more than likely they're gonna let you go on there but they may have some they just want to make sure you're you you're gonna be healthy and everyone else as well uh kim says what is the dress attire for the for a man on the symphony of the seas during dinner Collared shirt, um, pair of nice slacks or jeans. That's all you have to do. Ashley Elliott is here. We've onboard credit for booking with MEI Travel. How do we access that for when we get on board? Ashley, great question. And thank you for using MEI Travel, which is our sponsor travel agency here at RoyalCarbonBlog.com. Ashley, what I would tell you is when you get onboard credit from a travel agent, it will be preloaded on your CPAS account. Keep in mind a lot of cases when you get um, onboard credit from a travel agent, Usually, it may take like 24 hours for it to show up. Basically, it's a credit on your account, Ashley. So if you take your CPAS card, right, and you go to the spa and you book a massage and the massage costs $200, $100, whatever, um, you'll get eventually, you'll see later on in your bill, you'll see the charge for $200 at the spa and you'll also see a, also see a credit for 50 bucks and then obviously you will owe real and your balance will be 150 That's all you have to do. So in fact, I'm going to say that's all you have to do. I really mean there's nothing extra to do. Jess, ultimate dining package, what restaurants are included? Pretty much all the special restaurants except for dining experiences and things like Chef's Table is not included. Um, Izumi Hibachi is not supposed to be included. Uh, and that's about it, really. Everything else is pretty much included. There's a fly flying around here. It's really annoying me. Sorry. Um, uh, Marilyn says, I used to get seasick really bad and was really nice, was very nicely surprised. The cruise line gave me pills at no charge. Absolutely. It's it's a really good little secret there. Theory is here. Welcome, Theory. Uh, 12th Man wants to know, do you know what Coastal Kitchen serves on embarkation? A full lunch menu or something else? I believe it's a full lunch menu, 12th Man. I could be wrong on that one, um, but they do mix it up a little bit. Swordfish, uh, do you have do you use any special credit cards while cruising different locations due to the foreign transaction fees? Yes. For a number of years, Swordfish, I never did. I was just using my regular credit card, and we always got hit with those foreign transaction fees. Foreign transaction fees are what the credit card will charge you for using your credit card outside the United States or your home country for that matter. Most basic cards have a transaction fee, but a lot of good travel cards um, get around this. I actually have the, I, I got specifically for this reason, the Chase Inc. Bus I have a business preferred card, um, but they have the Sapphire Rewards travel card uh, that gets around this. And I was looking at, I looked at that and the American Express um, platinum card, but the problem with the Amex card is that a lot of places in the Caribbean uh, do not take it. Think, nope. Sorry. How do I not catch this thing? It's like the small. Anyway, I'm gonna ignore the fly now. Um, a lot of places don't take American Express, and uh, yeah, there you go. So that's why I went with the Chase card. Uh, Marcelo, what's the best reason to avoid? What is the best reason to avoid sea storms? That's the only thing that scares me. You should. Well, first of all, there are no guarantees of great weather any time of the year. I know what some of you were thinking. Oh, well, it's an easy question for uh, Mauricio. It's that you should avoid hurricane season, right? Right? I remind you all that a couple of years ago, there was a very infamous incident involving Anthem of the Seas where she was caught up in this winter storm off the coast of uh, the Mid-Atlantic States, and it was all over the news. It, it was, you know, huge waves and lots of wind, and that was in February, which is not hurricane season. So, Mauricio, what I'm here to tell you is there is no guarantees in life. It's weather. Uh, it, it, there are there is no there is no one day, one week in which somebody can tell you definitively, yes, Mauricio, this week, this day is going to have perfect weather. You can't do that. Now, granted, if you go outside of hurricane season, well, there's probably not going to be a hurricane to contend with. But again, it's not to say that you can't have bad weather. So I just want to make sure that's very, very clear. Um, if you really want to time it well or have better odds, I guess I would tell you, Avoid hurricane season. Avoid January, early or late winter. You know, like January through March, maybe. Um, you see those winter storms there, but even then, there's no guarantees. Uh, Nax twenty ninety nine, love your show. Do you know anything about dialysis at sea on Royal Caribbean? I know that it's a thing. <laughs> it's, it's an offered option there. In fact, Nax, what I would recommend you do is um. When, if you go, I, I don't have the link right handy for me right here, but what I would recommend you do is go to, um, there's a Google the Royal Caribbean Special Needs form, and you'll find, I believe, information about the dialysis machines. Karen, what's up? What are the best walkie talkies you use on a ship? None of them. Don't use walkie talkies. There, there are two problems with walkie talkies. There's a lot of interference because you're in a ship that's a giant metal box, so you get a lot of interference, and more importantly, they're, they're very annoying to other guests. My advice 
is rather than invest in a pair of walkie talkies, get an internet package. It's not that expensive and you can agree on a common app to be able to message each other. Surface, you don't get nearly enough credit for your knowledge and assistance uh, to all of us and many others. Well, thank you. Surfish, I really appreciate that's very kind of you to say. Amelia's first ever live chat. Love it, Amelia. Welcome. If this is your first time watching me live, I know Swordfish has been here before, but if this is your first time watching me live, type new in capital letters so I can personally welcome you here. Roberta, can you purchase travel insurance for 40 days from a cruise day? You can, yes. Just keep in mind the rates may be different today, Roberta, than they would have been, you know, six months ago or something like that. Keith, thank you for being welcome. Christina, welcome. Beverly, welcome. Diana Smith, welcome. Uh, Nia, welcome. Uh, Roberto, welcome. Cindy, welcome. Uh, Eric, welcome. Uh, Mary Cole, welcome. Greg from Texas, welcome. Uh, Luis Torres, what's going on, brother? Welcome. Good to see you here. Uh, Jennifer Johnson, welcome. Jacob Butler, how do I make sure my 13-year-old has a good time with a one-year-old? Good time with a one-year-old? Um, they'll have a great, it's, go to the pool. You ever seen kids in a pool? They never complain. They, they complain when they have to leave, but that's about it. Christina Myers is here. Welcome, Christina. Glad to see you here joining us. Shout out to your daughter who's somewhere around there. Her name is Sarah, right? Am I, am I mistaken? I hope, I hope her name is Sarah. That one's really awkward. Um, let's see here. Uh, Arwen, welcome. Glad to have you here. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, Marcus wants to know, Majesty of the Seas tips. Ooh, go to the Compass Deli. Compass Deli is uh is a great spot it's it's right behind the windjammer and it is a fantastic area you definitely want to go there they've got some fantastic food especially late night snacks you definitely want to go over there andy why do i keep seeing dollar amounts popping up well there's the super chat option but i've only seen one today unless you're talking about something else i'm not sure uh william my 13 year old wants to know if they have xbox on chips on royal caribbean's anthem of the seas they do this fly is getting so annoying and it's getting in the webcam also. Sorry. Man, how am I missing this thing? Ow! <laughs> Karen, thank you very much. There are Xboxes on, on uh, Quantum Class ships in the Seaplex. That's the only ones that do that. Um, in uh, in the uh, in Adventure Ocean, they do have video game systems there. I don't think they're Xboxes. I think they're like older PlayStations, like PS3s. Uh, I, I know there's video game systems of some kind in Adventure Ocean. Jess, will something ever come to Port Canaveral? It's quite possible, Jess. I mean, don't forget that um, you have the option of, of uh, Harmony of the Seas there, so I wouldn't be surprised. Jacob Butler, I saw you on Mariner. I met a lot of people on Mariner this past week. In fact, last night, I ran, I forgot their names. Oh, that's super awkward now. But I uh, met a whole family yesterday on the Royal Promenade. I met a lot of people on there, which is awesome. No super, more super chats to catch the fly. I don't know where it went. Maybe I did catch it. I don't, I don't think so, but... It's, it's super annoying. And then it's one thing for me to be annoyed, but then I actually saw it coming on the camera. Anyway, <laughs> what is going on, Christine? Uh, Cheryl Osborne, how was Serenade of the Seas? We'll be sailing in February. It's a fantastic ship. Radiance class. I love the Radiance class. I go on her sister ship, Brilliance of the Seas, all the time. There he is, Chris. Great meeting you last night on Mariner of the Seas. Thank you for taking a moment to stop and talk with us. It was I was winding down. I had some late night pizza at Sorrento's. And then I was like, I'm going to bed. And I'm like, all right, well, my cruise is over, going back to my room. And then, bam, Chris and his family said hello, which is awesome. I love meeting folks on cruise ships. Uh, Q Plus, how did Coco Key fare after the hurricane? Fantastic. I was at Perfect Day at Coco Key yesterday. There was barely, honestly, if you didn't know there was a hurricane, you wouldn't have guessed that there was one, actually. Um, the most noticeable damage was really to the vegetation. A lot of the palm trees and some of the bushes and, and shrubs, if you will, that were that are there for aesthetic reasons had some, maybe some were missing or the palm trees looked like they just went through a hurricane, obviously for, for good reason. Um, but the, uh, but really, you really wouldn't know. Andy Puro, I gave, I don't want to pronounce your name. Andy, thank you for the super chat. Woo. Andy, thank you so much, my friend. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Amy, I uh, heard Voyager got rid of Johnny Rockets. Why? Um, I'm not sure what you mean there. I mean, are you talking about the refurbishment, perhaps? It's the only thing I can think of. I mean, obviously being in the Australian cruise market and, the, and slash Asia as well, uh, it's a little bit different needs than the United States, obviously. Um, Betty, keep diet or not during cruise alert in 12 days. I say try your best. I mean, look, you're on a cruise ship, you're on vacation, you can indulge a little bit, right? But I wouldn't sit there and fold your arms and be like, you know what? 
We're not doing anything. Mary Cole with a super chat. Thank you, Mary. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Very, very kind of you. Thank you. Uh, is it pronounced key or K, Eric wants to know. So, I always call the Coco K. And then earlier this year, when Perfect Day at Coco, whatever, opened up, Royal Caribbean had a meeting with uh, myself and other members of the press, and they said, you know, the Bohemians pronounce it Coco Key, and so uh, we're going to call it Coco Key. So I call it Coco Key. Paul Butch with the most important question of the night. Uh, how does Sorrento's, me Sorrento's measure up to Connecticut pizza, Paul? It's not even the same category. It's not even the same class. I mean, it's it's fine. It's tasty. But there's Connecticut pizza, and there is literally everything else. Keith, how's the Huda Playmakers? Really good. The wings are excellent. I like the wings a lot. Um, what Andy wants to know, what is Johnny Rockets Express? Johnny Rockets Express is Johnny Rockets on usually on quantum flash ships, where instead of, instead of having a sit-down restaurant, it is like just like going to like uh, I, I don't want like going to a fast food restaurant and you just order what you want and you pay for only what you order. There's no cover charge, you just pay per item. 12th man, we're going in six days. What would you suggest for dining in Fort Lauderdale? I'm gonna give you a suggestion for a place. I've never been here, but I have such faith in this place um, because my good friend Sabrina. Goes there all the time. She's and you know her on the message board, Twelfth Man. She's a uh, Left to Crew two thousand two. It is um, oh, it's a Mexican restaurant. What is it called? Bonanza? No, Mexican restaurant for Lauderdale. Uh, it is La Bamba. Bonanza, La Bamba Mexican restaurant. Uh, it's nineteen. It's one nine zero one Cordova Road. Check it out. Great great. Thank you, Don. You know exactly what I was talking about there. Uh, Justin is in here. Best cruise channel ever. Woo woo. Appreciate that. Uh, what type of shows are offered on Navigator Disease, Justin? You got, you got production shows in the main theater, comedians, the ice skating show. Great, great stuff over there. Uh, pretty, but saying Navigator next week, going to Nassau, given the Dorian situation, please suggest an itinerary. Uh, Nassau is fine, dude. No, it really suffered very little damage over there. I mean, the, the bulk of the damage was to places like Abaco and Grand Bahama Island, in which your ship is not going. So you don't have to worry too much about that. Uh, John, is there a freestyle soda machine on Liberty? I believe the answer is no to that one. Um, RSL is here. Hello, RSL. Good to see you again. Uh, do you have any recommendations for a hotel in the Tampa port, especially if they have transportation to the port? I do not have a specific recommendation. Um, I would recommend RSL posting this on the message boards at realcreamblog.com because I do know that a lot of folks have good recommendations there. Um, I, I, because I live in Orlando, I rarely, if ever, have stayed in Tampa. My advice, RSL, if I were you, if it was me doing it, I would simply go to like Priceline.com, do an express deal, get a great rate there, and take a lift to the to the port the day of. Uh, Don also likes, I think, in Fort Lauderdale, the Drunken Taco on A1A. And Don spends a lot of time in Fort Lauderdale. Uh, does the entertainment change for 2020, John Mueller? Not necessarily, no. Um... Deanna wants to know, why does anyone ever talk about Vision of the Seas? You know, unfor not unfortunately, but the nature of the beast, if you will, Deanna, is that the largest, newest cruise ships garner the lion's share of attention. I mean, most people tend to sail on them. Uh, these The larger ships tend to also be from more uh, accessible areas. People who are usually in these videos are on, a lot of people who are on YouTube or on Facebook or on RealCoreanBlog.com typically are North Americans. And so Vision typically sails elsewhere in the world. So there's less eyeballs on that. Thus, you're going to have less questions and attention given. It's not a slight on the ship, just a commentary, if you will, on the general nature or um, preferences, if you will, of the cruising public. That's all. Do I live in an apartment? I do not live in an apartment. No. I'm a big boy. <laughs> Why does Royal Caribbean not cruise on the West Coast, Roz? You know, that is a... A long and storied past that I could probably spend about 20 minutes talking about. It. Here's what it bo bottom line is. The re number one reason is money. Essentially, Royal Caribbean can make more money with their cruise ships elsewhere in the world than they can by basing it in uh, the West Coast. And in addition, a lot of the violence in Western Mexico has frankly killed, no pun intended, the uh, cruise industry over there. Does Miami Airport have a shuttle to the port? They do not, Diana, but you can take a lift. It'll probably cost you like 15 bucks. Uh, Rochelle is here for the first time live. Welcome. Jane Smith loves my Teddy Ruxpin. 80s corner back there. Uh, Captain Stable wants to know, have ever been on a themed charter cruise? I have not been on one yet, actually. I'm looking for the right opportunity. Joey How-Tos. Hey, man, I have a cruise coming up 
in May with a couple of friends on Oasis of the Bahamas. I was, I was wondering if there's any way to add credit cards for the other guests who are with me while on the ship. Yes, absolutely. So, Joey, two ways you can do this. When you do the online check-in, you check yourself in. Joey, all right, what's your credit card, Joey? Put your credit card in there. All right, cool. Next, you got to check in Joey's friend, uh, Bob. So you go to do Bob's check-in. And at the end of Bob's check-in, there'll be an option. Oh, do you want to use this credit card from Joey or add your own or add Bob's? You can do that subsequently for everybody else. But if that's not... Oh, that flies back. But if that's not too difficult for you, this fly... Curse you! Um, if that's too much of a pain, or you don't, your friends don't want to give you your credit cards. No worries at all. When you go to uh, when you go to check in on the ship to board it, you can sign your credit cards at that point. So you're good to go. You can always uh, add, change credit cards on the ship. James Leno is on Mariner right now, brother. I was just on there this morning, like a matter of hours ago. I was on that ship. Hope you have a great time. It was a fantastic cruise. Um, Ashley, any info on Coco Key? It is open. It's amazing. I was just there yesterday. Very little damage at all. The only damage is really to the vegetation. So, it's all up and running. Phil wants to know, um, how are the sail away parties on the ships? They're, I mean, it depends on the crowd, obviously. But they're a lot of fun. They're a lot very popular. They're going to play a lot of the dance music. You know, feeling hot, hot, hot. And the Cupid Shuffle. And all those kind of songs really get you in the mood. They're usually almost always on the pool deck. And they're almost always right after your mustard drill. Raphael wants to know, is there lobster night in the dining room on Oasis Clash? There is Raphael on the second formal night. It's called the Fisherman's Platter on the menu, but absolutely. I need chopsticks to catch the fly. That's a good Karate Kid reference right there. I like it. I probably I still wouldn't be able to catch it. Um, Jess Gordon, any excursion recommendations in Roatan? I was just there uh, for Thanksgiving last year, Jess, and we went to the Mayan Princess Resort. We had a lot of fun there, actually. We have a full review of it at royalcaribbeanblog.com. It's called Mayan Princess. Check it out. Uh, Lodge? Lodge? Uh, going on Explore the Seas, do we get more choice of gluten-free options in the main dining room or in the Windjammer? I mean, by virtue of the fact the Windjammer has more variety of food to begin with, you're going to have more choices there. But don't limit yourself to the menu. I think a mistake is if you're gluten-free, if you're vegan, if you're vegetarian, if you just like potatoes... Um, don't assume what is on the main dining room menu is the end-all be-all of what's on the menu. You can always go there and talk to your staff, talk to the waitstaff and say, hey, look, I'm, I, I eat gluten-free. I see there's some choices here, but what else could I eat that is gluten-free? And you know what? They're going to work with you to get some good choices for you. Um, Lori says, on Harmony of the Seas, October 6th, the same family, will we be able to use the app to communicate with each other? You're on which ship? Harmony. Yes. Yes, there is no charge for it. Um, Harmony and Allure of the Seas are the two ships currently that have not only the new Royal Caribbean app, but the chat feature on there, it's included, no additional cost. Terry wants to know, do you know how many Formula Nights are on a seven-night Caribbean cruise? Two. Dos. Two for all nights. Um, Andy wants to know, where can I find what group cruises you are doing? Brother, it's at royalcaribbeanblog.com. In fact, if you go to royalcaribbeanblog.com slash events, you'll find it right over there, my friend. It's on our main menu. Uh, Scott, is there bad weather during hurricane season? There can be, but like... You know, like, obviously during Hurricane Dorian, there was some bad weather around. But, like, this week, fine. No, no problems at all. So, there can be, but you shouldn't worry about it. Jane, will the rest of the fleet be getting onboard app soon? Eventually, yes, Jane. That is the plan. But the key word there is soon, and I don't know how soon, quite frankly. Um, Sydney Tamarack, recommendations for shore excursions in Port Costa Maya. Uh, my favorite all-inclusive day pass resort is by far in, in Costa Maya called Maya Chan. It's run by a couple of American expats. It's the best service you will find at any all-inclusive resort you ever visit in your life. It's so, so good. So, um, Sorry, I'm just getting rid of somebody who's... Uh, put user in a timeout. You go in a timeout. You don't need to put the same message 800 times. How many of your pants can you get dirty? Almost all of them. Okay. Uh, what is the secret menu with chicken curry in the main dining? Oh, the secret. Yeah, yeah. So swordfish to get curry, Indian curry on a Royal Caribbean ship in the main dining room. All you have to do is tell your wait staff, "Hey, I would like to have some Indian curry," and they can totally hook you up with that. No, no fuss about. It. Just ask them about it. Uh, so are the foods in the buffet area the same during? Are the foods? The, oh, the same as during dinner. Um, some are. There is some some carryover, but not all of them. Um, I would say the windjammer gets like. I mean, I would say about. 
25% of what you find in the Windjammer, maybe, of, of what would be considered entrees, are the same as the, as the, there's some overlap with the dining room, but there is also special things up there. Angela Roman, thank you for the super chat. Angela is on Anthem of the Seas right now in Bermuda in a junior suite. All right, raise your hand if you're jealous of Angela. I'm jealous of Angela, but Angela, thank you so much for the super chat. Mike Serini, 516 days till Symphony of the Seas. Not sure how I'm going to make it that long. I got a secret for you, Mike. Do you know how to make five, the 516 day countdown more bearable? It's really easy, but you got to promise you're not going to tell anybody, okay? Just, just you and me right now. Book another cruise sooner. That way, you don't have to count. You can count on something else. Uh, Mandy, did I go on Mariner's Seas alone these past few days or with my wife? I went alone. It was a last minute thing. My wife is very, very. Very understanding and loving. And uh, now I went by myself. Would have loved to have brought her. Uh, what are the embarkation lunch ports on Navigator of the Seas? Um, lunch options, actually, on Navigator, just, I mean, you have the main dining room. You have uh, Cafe... Oh, the fly is back. <laughs> you have, sorry, Cafe Promenade, Windjammer. Um, you've got, uh, usually, Chops Grill. And again, to get a definitive list... We always you go look at a past cruise compass. So we have an archive of them at royalcreamblog.com. Stu, is there a time limit on the drink package? There is not a time limit. There is simply you have to one drink at a time. Uh, Captain Sable, what's the status of Freeport? Did all the vendors hut survive? Actually, yes, it seems like they did. I mean, I only saw the structures. They seem pretty good over there. But beyond the walls of the port area, I have no idea because I wasn't really there. Um, Alicia, are you from Connecticut? Just curious because you mentioned the pizza. Yes, I grew up in Madison, Connecticut. Love that town and... In my not-so-humble opinion, Connecticut pizza is the best in the whole wide world. This fly is super annoying. I don't even know where it's from. I don't live in, like, a garbage dump, so I don't know where it's from, but... Focus, Daniel Sun, right? Um, Scott says, same. So you grew up in Connecticut, or you just think pizza's awesome? Oh, Alicia grew up in, is in Norwich. Pizza Connecticuters reunite, or something like that. Yes, Frank Pepe's, absolutely. Still wants to know, what ship is better, Oasis or Harmony? You can flip a coin. They're both great for both for different reasons. But since they're both Oasis class ships, you, you really can't go wrong. Raphael, you're from Rhode Island. Salute. I uh, can't go that far, brother. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> it's a celebration of all New Englanders, but mostly Connecticut. Uh, oh, you're from Connecticut also. Uh, Jeremiah grew up in New Haven. Awesome. Wow, I didn't realize how many... I don't like the term nutmeggers, but unfortunately, nobody ever came up with a really good nickname for Connecticut people. Uh, Sean and KC, new to the room. Welcome, guys. Glad to have you joining us here. Tess, recommendations for things to do on board Radiance of the Seas. Go to the helipad for sail away. Uh, you also want to go to, um, Radiance has, um, I was actually just talking to somebody today about Radiance. They still have Samba Grill, which is a Brazilian steakhouse. Check that out. It's a really good option there. So, um, oh, how am I missing this fly? I really, it's, it's like, oh man, it, it, it's like nails on the chalkboard for me. What's my favorite port to leave from, Ben? Port Miami. I mean, not to get to, driving to Miami is not fun, but the port is so simple, so beautiful, and so easy to navigate. Port Miami is now the gold standard of cruise uh, dis, uh, embarkation and disembarkation ports, if you ask me. Tim, also from Salem, Connecticut. Awesome. Uh, Christina, embarkation day, tips for harmony of the seas. Uh, you know, for lunch... I mean, Christina, you know I am a big fan of going to the Windjammer because it's my go-to spot. Um, a lot of people will tell you that you'll, you should look for alternatives to avoid crowds. If you get there early, it's not a problem. But Park Cafe is a really good choice for embarkation day lunch. And uh, spend as much time exploring the ship as you can, walking around, kind of getting your, your bearings as soon as you can. That's a really big thing. Um, at 1 o'clock, go register your kids for Adventure Ocean. Um, you also want to make sure... Um, if you have dining reservation, if you have a dining package, rather, go make your dining reservations as soon as you can. I would do that probably l eat lunch, go make reservations, uh, take a tour of the spa, you know, obviously go to your room at one o'clock, and then go register your kids for um, Adventure Ocean. Matthew, can you tell us more about seasickness on a cruise? Actually, we, we talked all about it at the beginning of this episode, so obviously, once this thing is over, we'll, uh, you'll be able to watch all that stuff again. Um, <laughs> Jason, thank you. Uh, John Mueller going on Ovation 240 Days. Any information about Cafe 270? Cafe 270 is a vastly underrated spot. It's kind of like Park Cafe on some other ships. You can get 
the Kemalwick roast beef sandwiches there, salads, great spot for breakfast. It's my favorite breakfast spot on that ship. I haven't been on that ship, but on Anthem I haven't. It's wonderful. Uh, what is better, Carnival or Royal Caribbean? I've never been on Carnival, so I'd be remiss if I was in here and tell you and pass judgment on one or the other. But obviously, I like Royal Caribbean quite a bit. Scott, what ships have laser tag? Harmony, Symphony, Mariner. I think Navigator does as well. Oasis is getting it. Um, I don't remember if Independence of the Seas has it as well, but there's a number of ships that have there. Um, uh, Mon Monifa, if I had to choose between Chops, Girl, and Jamie's, what would I go for lunch? I would pick Jamie's. My wife would pick, would pick Chops, probably. Uh, how is Symphony of the Seas? Awesome. Awesome. Christine says, ditto to Symphony breakfast. I ate there almost every day on Anthem of the Seas. See? Uh, how are the ice skating shows, Roberta? Actually, surprisingly very good. I know, you guys are thinking, ice skating shows? What? Like, why would I want to go see ice capades? It's not like that. The ice skating shows are actually fantastic on Royal Caribbean. Really, really nice stuff. Uh, ben says, is just me or is 150 Central Park not as good as it used to be? It's different. Different doesn't necessarily mean good or bad necessarily. I think it's changed, obviously, since the uh, departure of Chef Michael Schwartz from the from being part of the uh, the collaboration there. But it still has, in my opinion, 150 Central Park still has the heart of what that restaurant concept is all about. So while it doesn't have the salts and, and some of the other things that it used to have on the menu, they have added other things. And it's still a great experience. Keith, can you eat at more one specialty, more than one specialty restaurant for dinner per day with the ultimate food package? Yes, yes. Uh, does Allure sell Samba Grill? They're getting rid of it, uh, Marcus, as part of the refurbishment coming up. Um, let's see here. Uh, Trina says, have you heard anything about Lobster Night being limited? No, second formal night. Uh, Chad says, did they, did they charge onboard drink package pricing? Uh, it. Oh, sorry. Did they change on... Oh, let me reread Chad's question. Did they change onboard drink package pricing? It was buy one, get one half off last week. It's going to be pretty pricey for a single passenger. Guess it's better to buy in advance despite status. Yes, Chad. Uh, they haven't changed it, but they do change up the, the offers from time to time. But your observation is correct, sir. Always, always, always pre-purge it. Storm Prep Lady, thank you for the super chat. Storm Prep Lady writes, Sunday is cruise day, which you know what this means, Storm Prep Lady. I got bad news for you. This is going to be like the slowest week of your life. But we're here to help you pass the time. Jessica, can you tell me about Royal Up? Royal Up is Royal Caribbean's stateroom bidding upgrade program. Basically, you tell Royal Caribbean, hey, if there was an opportunity to upgrade to this particular category, I'd be willing to pay price X. And that's kind of the basic. And if there is an opportunity and no one else bids higher than you, Royal Caribbean will accept your bid and upgrade your room. That's the really, really short version of that. Um, Andy, are they getting rid of the library on Oasis? I don't believe so. They're just moving it around, Andy. Um, Christina, what is a Super Chat? I'm new to this YouTube live thing. Super Chat is kind of like a super heart on Periscope, Christina. It's a way to tip. You you, you give a tip, and it's it's a certain denomination as opposed to Super super Hearts, which I don't even know what they mean anyway. But with this, you can donate you know, a dollar or... 10 bucks, whatever you feel. It's kind of like, um, it, it's a tip is what it is. Gratuity. <laughs> uh, does Liberty Seas have fridges in the cabins? They do, Duana. Yes. Storm preparability. Are any chance that Lure is going to be bringing supplies to the Bahamas? The current, there's a very good chance of it, Storm preparability. Currently, Royal Caribbean will be, every ship that goes near the Bahamas, basically, is going to probably stop and make a quick supply drop there. Um, it, uh, until further notice kind of situation. So as an example, I believe Majesty was there today. Navigator was there yesterday. Mariner the, the day before. Um, JC, is there really a need for libraries anymore on cruise ships? Always empty. I'd agree with you, man. But you know what? Libraries are kind of a um, vestigial part of the cruise industry. Um, and for the time being, there's still a lot of people who feel very strongly about it. If nothing else, to just have that public space to sit and read. It's not the most popular option on the ship. I, I give you that. But also, it's a very small area. And it's hard to like, you're not going to put like a specialty restaurant in there or a uh, a bar of some kind. Do you inside cabs have a fridge? Yes, all rooms have a fridge. Absolutely. Christina Myers with her super chat. Look at that. Wow. That's very, you don't have to give me a super chat, by the way. It's completely optional. I'm not sitting here pandering, um, you know, money for the poor. But um, thank you so much, Christina. Very, very kind of you. Very generous as well. Uh, on Anthem, it's almost saying, yeah, JC, that's like up on the, in 270 on the upper deck. Tropical, is the new allure this is going to be bigger than the regular? No, no, no. No change to the ship's size. They're just refurbishing elements of the ship inside. 
Uh, start properly. Where can I send you my cruise compass? Email to Matt at RoyalCaribbeanBlog.com. Matt, M-A-T-T, at RoyalCaribbeanBlog.com. That reminds me, I do need to scan my cruise compass from um, Mariner this season, this past weekend. So, uh, good questions, guys. Thanks for joining us here. And uh, you know what? I can't top Christina Myers. I mean, there is no topping. It, when, when Christina Myers gives you a super chat, w w my work here is done. So thank you very much, guys, for all your help and support. Uh, we're here live every Monday. So come join us here for these uh, YouTube lives here on Monday. And in the meantime, go check out RoyalCaribbeanBlog.com for plenty more Royal Caribbean news, fun, information, advice. It's all waiting for you at RoyalCaribbeanBlog.com. Until then, guys, have a great rest of your week. And we'll talk again very soon right here on YouTube. See you guys. Bye, Sarah.